for those students that have already joined us, thank you very much. Um, we will be getting started probably a couple minutes after the hour just to give um, people a chance to log in and get settled. Uh, so please stand by and again, thank you for joining us. For all of you that have just joined us, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna give it um, probably just a few more seconds to give people a little more time to log in and then we will go ahead and get started. Okay, uh, my name is Ray Fuchioka. Uh, I am, I'm hosting this event for um, the Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering Department. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. So first off, Congratulations on your admission. I, USC has a very competitive admission process, so uh, you should be very proud of the fact that you have been admitted for our program. Um, and in addition to congratulations, welcome to the Trojan family and welcome to Southern California and the University of Southern California. Uh, to give you just kind of a quick look at our um, at our engineering school, uh, obviously we are here to um, basically make the world a better place through engineering. We currently have about 6,300 graduate students. Uh, that's about twice as many um, graduate students as we have undergraduate engineering students. We have 17 full-time tenure track um, faculty members that are members of the National Academy of Engineering. We are currently ranked number 12 um, as a graduate engineering program um, by US News and World Report. We have 76,000 engineering alumni worldwide. Um, basically, you can see that as part of your, as part of your network. Um, our alumni are incredibly good at, at responding to other alumni, current students. Um, so that is definitely one of our strengths. Uh, we have about $213 million in annual research expenditures. Um, we are very, um, very, very well respected in the area of research. And we do have 38 research centers and are a leader in funded research. Uh, we are also in Los Angeles, which is a global hub for innovation. I'm, uh, you can kind of see a little bit here as to um, what we have um, right here up near Caltech. We also have JPL for those of you that might be interested in working for a NASA center. Uh, SpaceX is here. And in addition to that, um, and you'll see this on the next slide, uh, Los Angeles has been a hub for the, or is a hub for the aerospace industry and has been for uh, a good many years. And virtually every major aerospace company does have a significant presence here, um, which leads us into career opportunities. Uh, you can see kind of just some of the companies that um, hire our students, both for full-time jobs and internships. 
Uh, we are also the number one state uh, when it comes to the employment of aerospace engineers um, and Los Angeles. And Los Angeles is the number one metropolitan area uh, for the same thing, as well as being one of the top paying cities for our space engineers. The annual mean wage in California uh, ranges between 120 or 126,650 and $142,260. And that's according to the US Bureau of, Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2020. We have a very diverse student population. Um, this, this picture just kind of gives you a feel for it. Um, a couple years ago at, at the undergraduate level, the incoming freshman class uh, reached gender parity. So 50% of the incoming students were women. Uh, we're still working toward that at the graduate level, uh, but, we, but we are working toward that. Uh, we have a lot of programs in place to uh, help recruit those that are um, traditionally underrepresented in STEM as well. Um, for those of you that uh, want to learn more about USC from current students, we do have uh, a graduate student ambassador program, and um, we urge you actually to uh, contact them. We, they are all reachable via chat, and they are very good at finding and are a great way of getting additional um, student perspective on USC and Los Angeles. Uh, here are just some links that that you'll have that you can use to find out more about USC. And actually, this is a good point for me. Good good time for me to point out that you will receive a copy of this presentation. So you don't need to worry about uh, copying down the URLs or anything. Uh, you will receive a copy. But we have a virtual tour, uh, information on student organizations and cultural communities. You can learn about student safety and wellness. And um, for those of you that are international students, um, you can find out a lot about the services we offer our international students through our international student um, support, su support services. Uh, some housekeeping details, um, fall deadlines. If you're an international student and have not yet submitted your financial documentation, the last day to do that is April 15th. And for all students, May 1st is the last day to submit the statement of intent. Um, and that would include the $500 commitment deposit um, for USC. And that commitment deposit does get automatically applied toward your first semester's tuition. So some good reasons for submitting the statement of intent earlier rather than later. Um, when, once you submit it, you get access to the pre-orientation resources. You can join the Viterbi Mentorship Program. Uh, you can definitely connect with your departments through academic webinars. You can also reach out uh, by email to the academic advisors. Um, if you are one of our online distance students, you can create your Dennett Viterbi profile, and you can also explore housing options and, um, and enter the USC housing lottery if you do want to be living in USC owned housing. And just so you know, although there isn't quite enough graduate USC owned housing for uh, students, there is tons of housing around USC, so there is not a problem finding. If you have any additional questions at the, after we finish this webinar, you are welcome to contact us. The easiest way and best way to contact us is through our online uh, form, which is right here. At this point, um, I'm going to be turning it over to our um, AME department, uh, Paul Rani as both a professor and the chair of the Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering Department. And uh, we are also joined by two of the graduate advisors, Warren Terazawa and Susan Sapp. Uh, let me stop sharing. And Paul, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, can everybody hear me all right? 
Okay. Uh, I'd like to introduce at this time my executive vice chair, Cavalier over here. I have a surefire way of getting his attention. Cavalier, Cavalier, here, Cavalier. Okay, I'll leave it there, you will get it. <clears throat> anyway, uh, anyway, I'm glad to see all of you here. Let me pull up my presentation. All right, so uh, first I'd like to introduce myself. Um, I'm the chair of, oh, you dropped your, Cavalier, you dropped your apple. Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay. So I'm the chair of the Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering Department. I got my doctorate in aeronautics and astronautics from MIT. My master's is also in aeronautics. My undergraduate, my bachelor's degree is in mechanical engineering. So I essentially split the, uh, uh, the boundary between the two fields. Um, my research is in the area of combustion, energy, chemically reacting flows. I've had experiments flown on three space shuttle flights. And for the first two of those, I was a uh, backup crew member. I didn't get to fly in space, but I went through all the training. Uh, as you can see, I have an interest in horses, or I should say, I have an interest in paying for horses. My daughter has an interest in horses. I've actually grown, uh, grown to be quite accustomed and quite fond of them as well. And I also do some um, extracurricular mechanical engineering here. I like outdoor sports, um, skiing, backpacking, and uh, backcountry jeeping. So let me say a little bit about AME. First of all, we're a small department. We have a total of 25 tenure track faculty, 16 full professors, two associate and seven uh, assistant professors, one research professor and eight uh, teaching track faculty members, as well as a very capable staff, including Lauren and Susan, who you've met. Uh, we have on the order of 115, I think the proper term, Cavalier, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think the proper term is now freshers, a gender neutral version of freshmen, and about 20 transfers per year at the undergraduate level, um, somewhere around 450 or 500 master's students and about 100 PhD students. So our areas, uh, our strategic directions for research, uh, we have four thrusts going on right now. We're actually hiring new faculty in these areas as we speak, as soon as I get done with this, I have to go to campus and start interviewing a candidate. Anyway, robotics and autonomous systems, energy and sustainability, design and manufacturing, and medicine and bioengineering. And particularly, we're interested in incorporating into all of these areas, um, artificial intelligence and machine learning, as well as we're trying to increase our footprint in the aerospace industry. I mean, we have many of our leaders uh, of the local aerospace industry are actually our graduates, but we'd like to have actually more interaction with, uh, with the local aerospace industry than we do now. So some other um, highlights, uh, 14 of our 16 um, full professors are fellows of at least one of the major professional organizations that includes the American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, um, American Association for the Advancement of Science, American Physical Society, et cetera. And we have um, 11 of our faculty have received one of the early career awards. That is when you're still an assistant professor, untenured, there are certain competitive awards, very competitive awards, and our, our faculty have done very well in that. Uh, in terms of our student accomplishments, uh, our, um, our aero design team, the Design Build Fly competition sponsored by AIAA, we have won the national championship three of the last seven years. Now imagine if our football team had won the national championship three of the last seven years. Uh, so we're so our um, aero design team is sort of like the Alabama uh, of the uh, Design Build Fly competition. Also, we have a very active NASCAR um, uh, formerly SAE race car team. In fact, a couple of months ago. NASCAR built a track inside the LA Coliseum, and before any of the NASCAR vehicles ran the track, they let us run our formerly SAE car around the track. So actually for two days, we held the track record. And you can see also on the lower right there, 
there's our aero design team, one of the years that they won the national championship. So I like to say just a couple of things about what's, what's different about mechanical engineering compared to, you know, when I was at your stage or even just 20 years ago, what was different? What's different now? Basically the way we do anything now in engineering is that we, um, is that we don't just sort of say, oh, that looks about right. And I think I'll build it that way and then we'll test it and see if it worked out. No, first we have from our specifications, we come up with ideas, we brainstorm ideas. We then draw them out in computer aided design or CAD. We use simulation tools then to test it virtually before we test the device physically. And by testing that may be for its structural uh, integrity, stresses and strains. It may be flow if it's something involving, let's say an aircraft. It may be on almost any system. We have thermal management issues as well as electrical uh, properties. So we do all this by simulation first. Then when we have an idea that we like, it looks good according to simulation, then we don't just take a block of material and start cutting it apart. We basically start with nothing and build it up in layers in the 3D printing process. A couple of other things that are very different now in terms of how we do make any device is we have many sensors and actuators. Your car has hundreds of sensors and actuators to control and monitor temperatures, pressures, positions, speeds uh, of almost everything in your, your vehicle. And also now we're much more collaborative with people in other fields, particularly medicine, I think is one example, with chemical engineers, uh, with electrical engineers, it's much more collaborative than it was uh, even 20 years ago. So a few of my goals as chair, one is to increase our national rankings. Of course, every department chair, including my executive vice chair here, uh, knows that we want to increase our rankings. And it's not just for bragging rights. It's a, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. That is, if we increase our reputation, that means we get better students and better faculty. And so it becomes a uh, uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. It turns out the US news rankings are based on a single, uh, for the department level, not for the school level, but for the department level, are based on a single one through five ranking by other department chairs in the same area. So I'm working on reaching out to department chairs so at least they know us and can give us uh, good rankings. Um, this will certainly increase the external um, perception and visibility. And most importantly, it'll increase over time the value of your degree. Uh, I also am very concerned with making sure that I provide our junior faculty with the resources and the guidance they need to be successful. And uh, they have been actually quite successful as I think I'll mention, I think it's on the next slide. Uh, I also wanna further improve, I think our student experience is very good, but I think we can do even better. And one of the things I wanna do is create a graduate level version of our undergraduate course that we call Megoptronics. Now Megoptronics is where the students learn hands-on instrumentation uh, and experimentation. And one thing that we don't have this yet, but it won't be you know, on the books this year, but hopefully next year, say when you're in your second year as a master's student, to have this course available to you, where you can really do a lot of hands-on um, uh, instrumentation and experimentation. Because I think that's one thing that most master's programs don't have is any sort of hands-on uh, experience. And so I really want to change that. Um, and the hidden agenda, now, I was a student at four different universities and I was on the faculty at another university before coming to USC. And on all those five universities, none of them really had that much of a sense of family or spirit. So when I came to USC and people were talking about the Trojan family, Trojan spirit thing, I was like, okay, whatever you say. But, but I came to find that there really was something to that. This is a family and I wanna create this family atmosphere within uh, the AME department. So when I wanted to say, oh yeah, about our successes, the two of our junior faculty just this year, just this year received that NSF Career Award, you know, showing the recognition by their community as they're being the experts, you know, upcoming uh, experts in their fields. So in terms of um, the road to success, um, Susan um, or Lauren can correct me if I'm mistaken about any of this. So basically 27 units, which corresponds to seven or eight classes. Most of our graduate classes are four units, some are three units. The one requirement is AME 525, an applied math class. 
no more than I believe it's eight units can be at the 400 level. Uh, meaning that they're senior level classes. So you're allowed to take some senior level classes and no more than four units of AME 590, which is directed research. Now, some of you, I noticed in the questions that were asked before, um, beforehand, a lot of you were asking about research. Let me just end about the master's thesis option. So I'll just say a couple words about that. First of all, you're allowed up to four units of directed research. And in addition to that, if you're doing a thesis, four units of AB 594, which is basically uh, the credit credits you get for your master's thesis. And it's primarily, I feel this is primary for students who want a research experience, but don't intend to continue for a PhD. If you're going to go for a PhD, I don't necessarily recommend this, uh, unless you want to say do your master's here and then go on to a PhD somewhere else. And you want to have this research experience to improve your application for PhD programs. Um, it's actually not an option that's used very much by students, but you're certainly more than welcome to do that. And in terms of what research should you do, it's really up to you to reach out to faculty members, find a faculty member that has a master's level. You know, the thing is, us faculty, we think about in terms of PhD level research, we think about PhD projects. So you're going to have to say, whoa, 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 I'm looking for a master's level research project, not a PhD level research project. So just a few suggestions, um, you know, you, you've gone through four years of undergraduate study, so you're probably an old hat at this, but just a reminder, come to lectures. It's very, it's very tempting not to come to lectures, especially when you can watch them online after the fact, but I really strongly encourage you to come to lectures. I encourage you to study independently and, as, and in groups because you really don't know anything. Believe me, I know this from a long experience. You really don't know anything until you have to teach it to other people. Uh, read your textbook or lecture notes, pick up your graded homeworks uh, and solutions. A lot of students don't, this is more at the undergraduate level than the graduate level, but even at the graduate level, a lot of students do that. And when studying for your exams, do the posted sample exams, look at your old homeworks and, and examples in the lecture notes and try to do them without actually looking at the answers. Also, I strongly encourage you to go to faculty members' office hours, not just for your own classes, but for anything that you're interested in because this is a university. The root word is universal. So if you don't find out what you're really passionate about now, when exactly are you going to? Like if you're interested in some 18th century French author, there's probably somebody on campus who's an expert on that author. Find out who it is, go to his or her office hours and learn, you know, get their perspective on this author. And you know, embrace the, if you're not from the area, um, embrace the Southern California environment. Um, you know, you're part of an elite group. Many qualified applicants were turned away. Um, we want you to succeed. We admitted all of you because we we're confident that you can. Um, also embrace the camaraderie with your classmates. You know, learn about what they're doing and tell them what you're doing. Um, because that's an important part of your graduate experience is the interaction with your classmates. And I'd like to encourage some of you to consider continuing on for a PhD. And, you know, also be sure to have some fun. And so my ask to you is to be an ambassador. You know, hopefully we hope that you'll enjoy your experience as a member of uh, AME. And so we hope that then after you finish that you'll be a good uh, ambassador for us. Um, so just a little sales pitch, why, why USC? Why, why this department? You know, uh, the focus is on quality and impact, you know, not quantity. We're a small but hopefully growing department. There's a very intense interaction uh, with the faculty. You know, we're, you're not just one of hundreds in our largest classes. I guess the Amy 525 is the largest class. And, you know, that one can be like 100, 150, but all, all, all the other classes will be much, much, much smaller. You know, typically maybe on the order of 20, 30, 40 students. We have a lot of student-led activities, uh, mostly collegial colleagues, mostly, you know, as I put that in parentheses, a very proactive and administ uh, innovative administration. Yeah, we do get it wrong sometimes. I don't have to tell you about those things, but mostly we're very proactive uh, uh, and innovative. And the nearby industries where you can, uh, um, you can become employed. And as I mentioned, uh, the Trojan family. So why Southern California? Um, the weather, maybe. The culture, maybe. For me, it's the geography. Being able to go to the beaches one day, the ocean, the next day, uh, we have a, actually a research facility on Catalina Island. You can actually go visit for a day. 
costs like $25 or something and you get to use the kayaks and the snorkeling equipment and all that. Um, the mountains and the deserts uh, and um, you know, there's just so much opportunity for the outdoors here. That's just my, uh, that's just my personal uh, bias. But anyway, you know, getting a graduate degree is a, is a long hard climb but good luck in this. This is Half Dome in Yosemite, and uh, I wish you well. So with that, I will stop and turn it back over to... Hello, everyone. My name is Lauren Terraza. I'm one of the assistant directors in AME. Um, I, along with Susan Seth, advise the master's students, and I am joined today by Michael and Tori, and I'm so happy to have them here. Um, I'm excited to talk to you all about some experiences at USC and what it's like to be a master's student. And so just to get started, Michael, Tori, will both of you introduce yourselves with your name, your major, hometown, the program that you're in, and why you chose USC. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I guess I can go first. Um, so hi, guys. My name is Tori Wilson. I um, am currently a mechanical engineering student here at USC. Um, I am from a small town called Texarkana, Arkansas. Um, I did my undergrad studies um, in New Orleans, though, at uh, Loyola University, New Orleans, uh, where I studied physics, actually. Um, and I tra decided to trans transition, excuse me, uh, to mechanical engineering. Um, I chose USC because, uh, like they were talking about earlier, I have always wanted to work in aerospace um, and with California being such a hub for um, those, that industry, I really thought that putting myself in that position um, to be connected with people in that industry was um, going to benefit me and my future. So yeah, thanks guys. Hi everyone. I am Michael. I am a graduating master's student in my last semester in mechanical engineering. I transferred into USC um, about four years ago as a junior um, in my undergraduate. And I think a couple semesters in, I was like, yeah, I want to stay here for my master's. So the whole environment, the prestigious research professors that I've come across with, the extracurricular activities, the geography, as Dr. Paul Ryan said, um, is what kept me here and what um, dro drove me to continue my uh, graduate studies. I am focusing in control systems, which is a pretty tough, pretty tough field, along with all the other disciplines that the AME department has to offer. And I've, I've, I, I couldn't be happier with the education that I've gotten. Awesome. Thank you both so much for sharing that. Um, could you maybe talk about a little bit kind of like what the classes are like, you know, as a more theoretical project based? I can go ahead. Um, the thing that actually landed me a job, I think, is the amount of projects that my professors um, had us do in our in our in our classes. Um, I found that through those projects, I, it was a huge learning experience, and my the, my future employers um, considered it as experience where I took ownership of a project and delivered a result. And it was done in a way that my professors wanted it in a way where it's professionally because this university is so industry oriented as well as the theory um, through the research that you are uh, fortunate to have professors that have served many years in the industry and know how to guide you to what to expect. Tori, did you want to add to that? Yeah, so I would have to agree. I have found that the classes have been uh, very project based, um, which was something important for me when I was looking um, at graduate programs, because coming from physics, physics in general is just very the theoretical. Um, and I wanted to gain that hands on experience. And like Michael said, we've had so many just professional level projects that we've had to do in our classes um, that I've been able to talk about in interviews. Um, and people kind of respect that because they know like USC, like the level of education we're getting here. So. 
How demanding would you say the coursework is? And also on a second question, um, is there a favorite class that you can think of? Or if you can't pick one class, is there a favorite project maybe that you've worked on? Um, yeah, I can go ahead and uh, talk about that. Um, the coursework is fairly demanding. Um, it is, I mean, it's a master's level work. You're gonna be focused on it. Um, I. But the thing about it is, is it's all about balance, right? Like you, if you focus on your work and you get your homework done, like you will also have time to be involved in those student activities that they were talking about. You'll also have time to enjoy LA and the geography and the, all the fun things there are to do here. Um, but I think that's something very important to keep in mind with like any graduate program is just time management, just keeping, um, like not waiting till the last minute, starting on your projects early. Um, I found that that has been the biggest help. Um, and then my favorite class, um, I'm actually continuing my relationship with the professor um, and like I've become a creator for the class, like I've loved it so much, um, is AME 503, which is Advanced Mechanical Design. Um, it is, it's taught by um, Professor Jonathan Souter and he actually works at JPL. Um, and so he has a lot of great industry experience, um, a lot of varied industry experience across like multiple, um, just multiple industries where he's able to bring that to the class. And we've had um, really great projects that we had to do in that class. We had to completely like take a mechanical system and completely redesign it um, from start to finish from, you know, like doing the equations, picking the part, making the CAD model, um, creating the prototype, uh, which, and we all did it all in a group, which I think is really great um, experience. And I've talked about that on a few interviews as well. So it's just uh, a lot of hands-on experience, which I really enjoy. Yeah, well, USC is definitely not a walk, walk in the park. Um, it's challenging, it'll challenge you, um, but I found that to be the main thing that helped me there was uh, our small classroom sizes that you can uh, reach out to your classmates um, through WebEx, like we've been doing the past two years. Um, but um, even in person, uh, the classrooms are so small, you feel an intimate environment you know, with the students that you're in. So it's very easy to just you know, form a group and work on stuff together. And my favorite class, so far is um, linear control systems as an undergraduate. Uh, I fell in love with it. That's why I focused my graduate studies in, in the field. And for the past two semesters, I've actually been a grader because um, it uh, helping me reinforce, as, as you go into advanced graduate level theory, it's kind of easy to leave behind what you, what you picked up in undergrad and you kind of have it, take it for granted. Oh, it's there, I know it. But let's say you're encountering a problem and you're like, oh, I forgot this from two years ago. So it, it, it really helped me um, keep sharp on, on those um, you know, introductory topics that are kind of, in, at least in my field, kind of avoided um, in, the, in, in the more graduate level theory. And I've had great relationships with my professors. They're all very willing to help. If you show that interest, they'll, they'll show it back. And one thing that I want to emphasize is don't deprioritize your health because of your studies, because your health will help will help really help you succeed. Keep your sleep in and you know, keep your sleep discipline. Keep your um, it's easy to just go get take out. You're in LA, you have all these options, but um, I found that good health and good diet really helped me excel. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, mental health is extremely important and you know. Our students' health and well-being is our first priority always. Um, can you talk a little bit about like how students can get involved in or like connected to industry uh, during their program? And then can you maybe share some personal experience, whether it's like events you've attended or internships or anything like that? Yeah, there's no shortage of events for industry. There's almost one every week, from my experience, um, from all types of fields, especially our career fair. It's flooded with, um, even though LA is an aerospace hub. Our career fairs are flooded with um, all types of diverse industries, and they're all looking for for you. To be honest, that's why they're they're there in the first place. 
Um, there's all these there's all these talks that representatives who come in. You can I had a friend that um, was debating on going to this talk about this company, and he was like, ah, what the hell, I'm not gonna go. And then he went. And at the end of the, the end of the talk, he had a resume with him, handed it over, and got, got an internship. So take advantage. There's a lot of emails coming in your inbox, but take your time and read them because in that email, there might be an opportunity for you. There will be an opportunity. Yeah, um, I definitely have to say that the emails sometimes can be overwhelming, um, but just taking the time, like setting aside like 15 minutes of your day like every other day can uh, to help like go through those emails and clean them out can really help you organize like what day, what internships are on. Uh, I personally live off campus. So just having to um, prioritize what you um, want to go to, it can be a little difficult because there are so many amazing opportunities that we have here on campus, but um, it, it's worth it just to create not even like if you don't get like an internship or anything like you get networking connections you get um things that will eventually benefit you in the future so um yeah just definitely taking advantage of all of those opportunities how would you say the program has helped you with your career goals um so i knew I wanted to work in aerospace when I came here. Like that was the whole reason in doing it. Um, I had no idea what I was gonna do, like the first steps, anything like that. I mean, I came from a really small university and my program there was very like, they pushed us heavily into like research um, and theory. And I just realized, you know, three quarters of the way through that that was not for me. Uh, I wanted to work in industry, so. We have an amazing like career center. The Viterbi Career Center is um, excellent. They have so many resources. I've been able to have like one-on-one -on -one conversations. I literally made like four one-on-one -on -one conversations where I talked about like my resume, like networking, um, like how to talk to people, like just, and you go over different topics with those advisors. Um, and they're, you know, like, I, it's been a slow going for me personally, but I think that, that those resources has definitely helped me make like leaps and bounds in um, furthering my career goals. For me, the thing that helped me was the fact that my professors would send, um, you know, mass emails to the whole class about opportunities that they have been contacted by. Um, actually, my first two internships were through um an email that i found in my inbox that a professor had forwarded to the whole class um an acquaintance of his in the industry was looking for an intern and um yeah I, I i think i owe it to my professors definitely um and i also owe it to the fact that um they made it very interesting um for me to continue on for a master's degree and to hone down what i want to do uh, with engineering. Have either of you gotten involved with anything like with research with faculty or anything like that? I haven't done any research myself. I have been involved with um, two design teams, the Liquid Propulsion Lab Laboratory and the very beginnings of the Formula SAE Electric team. And it, it was, I love the fact that USC has a, or AME has an involvement fair, or I think Viterbi has an involvement fair where all of the student design teams showcase their work um, in a, in a day long uh, setting. And you can just go browse around and see what you like. Everyone's very approachable. Um, yeah, you won't have a hard time joining any teams. Yeah, I um, haven't gotten involved in any research um, specifically. Um, I started my like um, journey at USC um, in the spring semester of 2021. So we were still fully online, like fully on Zoom. So I didn't necessarily take advantage of the student organizations as much as I should have. Um, I have been involved with the Women in Engineering Club. Um, they are a great group of uh, people who put on, you know, events for all people. Um, and besides that, like I 
but now that I'm like back on campus and like seeing all these people and like all these opportunities, um, I definitely want to take advantage of that my last couple of semesters. So. Awesome. Yes, definitely. The uh, involvement fair is always at the beginning of the semester. It's like a week long. It's so much fun. There's literally a club or organization for everything. Like you want to do surfing, rock climbing, you want to go to an animal shelter, deal with that. Like there's a club for anything and everything. So I think that's something that is my favorite part of the beginning of the semester is just kind of seeing what all is out there. Um, can you maybe talk about a little bit of like what there is to do in LA? I feel like that's kind of a uh, talking point for USC is just there's so much to that you can do. Can you guys maybe speak on that a little bit? Um, yeah, so I have loved living in LA. There's so much to do. I've gotten involved um, a lot outside of campus. Um, so for people who like might be like sports people or um, like I was a dancer in um, at my undergraduate university. So I was on the dance team and then I came out to LA and I'm like, I want to keep dancing, like even though I'm not necessarily like a dance person, I got involved with a dance company here uh, that's like developing a um, dance fitness app. So I've been able to work with them on like both sides of that, like uh, doing the filming and the choreographing and then also like the technical side of things, which has been really cool. Um, I got involved um, just like in like my friends have like club volleyball teams that they're involved in and um, like uh, everyone was saying earlier, like the geography, like you can hike, you can surf. Um, so if you want to stay active, like LA definitely makes that super easy, uh, as well as like having a lot of just like rich, like cultural institutions. Um, I love going to the Getty Villa, which is just like beautiful to like go and study at. It's like free. You, have, you can just make a reservation. Um, and yeah, so it's just a lot. You can like really diversify. Um, your experience here in LA. Yeah, um, I've had a great four years as well. Um, my getaway was riding my my skateboard on the boardwalk um, during sunsets um, when I had the time to get away from um, all my studying, all the hiking that I did around here, all the different road trips that I took during my spring the breaks. You can literally any direction you want to choose, you'll find something great. And uh, I encourage you to get out of LA because it, it can be a little overwhelming um, if you're especially commuting to, to school, maybe from another neighborhood in, in the area. Um, go to the beach because the beach is a great place um, to just, just you know, de-stress, see all types of different people. And the music, the music scene is also something that I really, I'm really, really gonna miss um, because it's just whatever you're into, it's here. And there's anything you can imagine you can get involved with. And it's really a hub of not just aerospace and mechanical engineering, but any type of engineering and any type of industry. What are your plans for after graduating? I know sometimes that's a scary question. <laughs> so I'm graduating in May, um, 2022, and I've accepted a job offer with uh, ASML, which is a semiconductor manufacturing industry as a mechatronics design engineer. And it's located in Connecticut, but they also have a R&D center in San Diego, which maybe in a year or two, I can make my way back. <laughs> Um, I still have a couple more semesters, so I'm still like really trying to figure out um, what I want to do, where I want to go. Um, but the end goal, I know it like my end goal, I want to work in aerospace and I'm just really trying to make those connections um, that I know will help me in the future. Awesome. And so my last question is, what advice would you give to future Viterbi students? Um, so my biggest piece of advice is like, and I've had to like really deal with this recently because I've thrown myself into my work and my studies. And there is like, my advice is like, there is time to focus on the things that you love. You know, like you can find the time to 
dance if you want to dance, like to ride horses if you want to ride horses. There is always time uh, to find things for the time that you love because like Michael was talking about earlier, taking care of yourself, taking care of your mental health. Um, if you really just like spend so much time like on your set, which is easy to do, you know, we get wrapped in it. Um, we all love what we do, right? Like we get wrapped up in our like research, our projects. Um, and then you find yourself like, oh, like I haven't gone out, like done anything that I love in like weeks and it gets really hard on your mental health. Um, so just making sure that you prioritize things outside of your studies, um, it can, it can really benefit your academic life as well. Yeah. I'm going to be honest uh, about my experience. It's been overwhelming as a progressive degree student because I was also completing undergraduate requirements through um, all, all two semesters of my graduate um, studies. I just finished my bachelor's this last December and I'm finishing my master's this May. And I honestly, with all that workload, I would go on weeks on end without doing any of my hobbies. But the thing that really kept me focused and in good mental condition because mental health is a big is a, is a hot topic and an issue nowadays is staying on top of my diet how i feed my body because that ultimately has an impact on my brain um and it's super easy to neglect health because and then mental health also deteriorates with that in my opinion so make sure you stay on top of what you're consuming and you know um, be a little more um, discipline than our, our standard American diet, I would say. Well, thank you both so much for providing such great insights into your experience at USC. We really appreciate it. Um, and now at this time, I think we can open it up to any questions or anything like that. And I see we have a few questions in the chat. And my colleague Susan Sack is going to assist me with the. So one question is, how feasible would it be to transition directly to a PhD if accepted into a master's program? Okay, I, <clears throat> I guess I'll take that one. Um, it's actually not a direct path. And the reason is because all of our PhD students are fully supported. So that means it's, it's a separate application process. And of course, it's much more competitive because now if we accept you, we're basically committing to funding you for at least four years for the whole thing. So I will say on the other hand though, it is a good segue because about half, I don't have the exact numbers, but something like half of our PhD students actually started out as master's students. And so it's actually a very good opportunity for both us to you know, see you and for you to see us you know, I, I, a lot of my PhD students, they were in a class of mine and they said, well, you know, could I do some research in your lab? And if I thought they were qualified, I say, okay, give them a little project to do. If they do well in that, if they like it, then I will invite them to apply for the PhD program. And, uh, you know, like I say a lot of my PhD students have gone, uh, have come about that way. So no, so the simple answer is no, it's not a direct path. It's a separate application. And then can you provide insights on job prospects in aerospace slash mechanical domain for international students? For instance, research with JPL is what I've heard a lot in this webinar. Are these open to all? Yeah, that's always a tough, uh, that's always a tough issue is, you know, a lot of the aerospace industry requires a US citizenship. There are, you may perhaps work for, not directly for the aerospace companies, but some of their subcontractors. Uh, so where you can work on, for example, modeling of subsystems or something where you may not even know what the system is, but you can do the modeling of a subsystem. But yeah, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of those um, jobs do actually require US citizenship. And then we also just always recommend that, you know, you work closely with us as your advisor, mm -hmm. the career services advisors, and then the Office of International Services. We kind of are the support system to help you kind of reach those goals. Yeah, well, I, will say, I will say my first PhD student um, at USC, he's actually at JPL, you know, manager at uh, JPL. And he's from uh, Tunisia, so it is possible. 
And then do we get the scholarship offer along with the admin? I can answer that one. <laughs> um, basically, the scholarship decisions are actually completely independent from the admission decisions. Um, in fact, we're currently in the middle of evaluating scholarship uh, possibilities and such right now. Uh, so even if you've been admitted uh, and you haven't received a scholarship decision yet, um, that doesn't mean that you will not receive one because we are in that process now. That does answer this last question about scholarship decisions still being in the works. Do we have any? Oh, thank you so much, Michael. Thank you, everyone. Do we have any other questions or anything? There were some questions that were asked and answered during the presentation. So if you have a chance, go to the answered column in the Q&A box and um, you can see some of our answers to the relevant questions. I think there are a few more questions um, that I saw from the uh, those that were posted before this. A lot of them had to do with research. And, um, you know, that's, well, how do you get involved in research? And basically the way you get involved in research is simply, you know, look at our website, look at faculty members' uh, research pages, find faculty members whose research interests you, and then just go make an appointment to see them, tell them what you're interested in, tell them what skills you have, uh, what you'd like to learn, and see if you can work out some sort of arrangement that way. That may be somebody who is an instructor in one of your classes, or it may be someone else. But in any case, just you know, feel free to reach out to us. I think I think we're all very approachable. So just just you know, interact with us. But of course, in most cases, we're not going to you know reach out to you. It's up to you to to reach out to us to show that you're interested in this particular uh, uh, field of research. And then any thoughts on the cost benefit analysis? USC is quite expensive. What can be said regarding the worth of a degree from USC? Uh, I feel like I'm a little biased because I am a double Trojan, but I think, you know, USC is, it will open a lot of doors. I think that, you know, the Trojan family, you know, uh, Dr. Ronnie spoke on that a little bit, but it's a very real thing. Like you will, you can be walking down the street in a USC t-shirt and people will say like, fight on. Um, so I think that it's such an amazing place to be. It's an, it's an amazing school. There's so many things to do. And I just, I loved USC so much. I literally never left. <laughs> so that's just kind of my thoughts on it. Um, Dr. Ronnie, do you have any additional things to add? Um, yeah, again, you know, I've been here a long time since 1993, and I've had opportunities to go elsewhere. And one of the things that's really kept me here is, you know, the Trojan family. If you're not part of it, it, it kind of sounds maybe a little hokey. Like I felt ho it sounded hokey to me when I first got here. I didn't realize that when I first came here. But that's one of the things that really uh, keeps me here. And you know, as uh, Lauren said, this whole Trojan family. You know, this is a way to get jobs. This is a way to, um, you know, to find a new career path if that's what you need. It's it's really quite a, a tight knit community, and uh, that's really why I've enjoyed being here. So that's a big part of the the value, and and the fact that we have, you know, we have everything right here on campus. You know, our football stadium is just across this. Even if you're not, you know, I suggest even if you say, well, I don't really, not really that interested in football. And you know maybe the team isn't doing so well this year. Go to a game or two. It's really an experience, and you can't experience that on television. Um, you know, go to some games and, and and feel the spirit and just sort of feel the interaction. You know, with uh, with other Trojans. We have a new head coach, so fingers crossed that turns around. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then in the chat box, uh, someone asked, can we still schedule a meeting with advisors if we haven't signed the intent? Yeah, just reach out to us at amegrad at usc.edu if you'd like to schedule a meeting and then we can kind of talk about, uh, we'll send you like our Calendly link and you can make an appointment with us there. And then I yeah. hear so much about the network. Oh, sorry, Dr. Ryan, were you going to add something? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to add, you know, I'm more than, um, you know, I have, you know, a commute the days that I go to campus. 
um, you know, I have a pretty decent commute. It's at least half an hour, sometimes much more, depending on uh, what time of day and what direction I'm going. So I'm more than happy to use those times, you know, to talk to prospective students. So if you want to reach out to me and schedule a meeting, you know, I don't always know exactly when I'm going to go to or from campus, but if I can, if you're a little bit flexible, I can call you when I'm on the road. And, you know, I'd rather, um, you know, I'd rather talk to students than just, you know, curse at the other drivers. You may hear some of that too, but. <laughs> and then I hear so much about the networking opportunities from USC, but how do you actually take advantage of that network? Um, one way is, you know, through the uh, Vitri Week Career Connections, they put on a ton of events where they invite industry um, folks over and kind of to meet our students and get involved and things like that. Um, LinkedIn is also another way you can see a lot of uh, people that have like, you know, USC alum listed. I'm telling you, like, they are more than happy to he hear from USC students that are interested in their fields and talk about it and talk about their interests and things like that. It's USC is awesome. <laughs> and then for do most students complete the program in one and a half or two years? Yeah, I feel like it kind of just depends. Um, our DEN students who are working full time, they will typically take one class uh, per semester. So it might take a little bit longer. Um, but for the most part, one and a half or two years, obviously that fluctuates depending on the student situation and whether things come up and whatnot. And I could um, answer the second question um, about our dual degree in mechanical engineering and engineering management. Um, so the dual degree is a partnership with the industrial systems and engineering department. The ISE department advises the engineering management requirements and we advise the mechanical or aerospace engineering requirements. Uh, we do want to uh, clarify that the dual degree just grants one diploma. Um, sometimes students um, assume that you'll get two diplomas when you graduate, but it's two majors all on one diploma. It's a combined degree and it does require more units than our other master's programs. Most of our other master's programs requires 27 units. The dual degree requires 48 units. And then for grad students who will be working full-time and attending part-time, will there be a very different experience compared to a full-time student? Any advice for students in this boat? Um, I mean, it might be slightly different just because you're gonna be, you know, in classes less, on campus less. Um, you will have obviously more uh, responsibilities because you're gonna be working full-time. Um, but I think this is when, you know, time management is going to come into like a, be a key factor. You want to make time to still get that experience and then kind of kind of just fit in stuff where you can fit it in. And that's like where the time management piece comes into play. Um, my advice, if this is a situation you're in, is just make connections with your fellow students as early on as possible. Try to see if maybe there's a day or two that you are maybe more free. And then that's when like clubs and organizations also come into play because like you can look for clubs and orgs that have events maybe like on the weekends or you know at times that work better for your schedule. Yeah, let me let me just add to uh, uh, to what Lauren said is that yeah at the undergraduate level you always have this sort of group of friends and you have this ex whole experience. At the master's level you know if you're working full time and then doing this part time it's easy to feel detached you know, from the university. So I strongly encourage you to follow Lauren's uh, suggestion and find some time to come to campus and get involved in something. I know that if you're working full time, there's not gonna be that much time, but really that's whole part of the whole experience is the camaraderie with other students. And don't, don't miss out on that just because you're a, uh, a graduate student, not an undergraduate. And then how are the pay rates for assistant assistantships? I think Susan answered this question earlier um, where she said that, you know, assistantships are not for master students, it's reserved for our PhD students, um, but there are opportunities for like graders um, and course producers in, in our classes. Yeah, and I think we're paying, I should know this as department chair, but I think it's like 18 or so dollars an hour for um, graders. Now you can also work in a faculty member's lab 
And you can do that either for pay, hourly pay, for academic credit, AME 590, uh, or, or just as a volunteer. It's up to you. Um, and if you're working as, you know, for pay, then, you know, it's, it's up to the, um, to the advisor to choose the rate. You know, I think I usually pay you know, about $20 an hour for students. And then regarding the dual degree program, would that be possible if I want to pursue the ME PhD degree after finishing the master program? Uh, I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Regarding the dual degree program, would that be possible if I want to pursue the ME PhD degree after finishing that master program? Oh, so I want to get the two masters and then the PhD? Yeah. Oh, well, somebody's very ambitious. Um, but yeah, there's no reason, there's no reason you couldn't. I mean, to be honest, the second master's degree, the one in management, isn't particularly going to be a special qualification for admission to the PhD program, but I mean, it doesn't hurt for sure. But don't look at that second degree as, as, as a good qualification. If you really want to improve your qualifications for admission to a fully funded PhD program, it's better to do more on the academic side because after all the PhD is an academic degree. So do something like, um, uh, you know, work as, as you know, in a faculty member's lab or do some, you know, R&D in, uh, um, in a company or something like that that gives you more of the academic experience. And then, okay. so, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I can answer this one regarding the letter of eligibility and whether or not they can um, defer their admission to 2023. Uh, you can, USC does not defer admission, but you can update your application for up to a year. So if you've been admitted for uh, fall 2022, you can update to spring or fall of 2023. The difference between update and deferral is that we do reevaluate the application and we cannot guarantee that you'll receive the same admission decision. But there is no cost involved if you do want to update. And then I think we have time for one last question that I can try to answer quickly. Uh, can we take courses from other departments other than our own? The answer is yes. Um, for most of our master's programs, the 27 units, you need at least 15 uh, units at the 500 level in AME. And the rest of those uh, units can be graduate level courses in any of the other engineering departments, math, physics, chem. Um, but if you have more specific questions about other like, you know, specializations or anything like that, feel free to reach out to us at amegrad at usc.edu and we'll be more than kind of chat some more about that. I just wanna say thank you so much for all being here. I can't wait to hear from you all hopefully soon and um, great, welcome to USC almost. <laughs> Cavalier says bye. Bye-bye <laughs> and bye it on. Bye it on. <laughs>